Here's what I do, how I do it, why I do it, and how you can do it. So I wake up every day around 7 a.m. with just enough time to make coffee. Then I drag myself to the office and I scream at the top of my lungs. <coughs> Meetings. Now I know that scream is a meme, but I legitimately yell at the top of my lungs out of... I don't know, pent up anxiety over all the things that I need to get done. Relaxes the body. Now this might not come as a surprise to some of you, to those of you who've worked in corporate environments. According to this report that analyzed over 30,000 companies meeting statistics, the average corporate employee spends 11.3 hours a week in meetings. Well, I spend roughly double that at an average of 20 hours a week in meetings. Luckily, I work remote and we rarely have our cams on, but you couldn't find a more introverted person than me if you tried. My social battery is on reserves most days, borderline on life support. I have a backlog of years worth of social energy I need to replenish. That makes saying no to every social gathering IRL real easy. Luckily, I've got no friends. To say that meetings are the bane of my existence would be an understatement. You do not hand in crap like this. This looks like you took a crap or a dump in the printer. However, a necessary evil when we provide security service to over a dozen clients. The meetings are to discuss incidents, security initiatives, new security controls, blah, 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 security, blah, stuff, blah. We also discuss any roadblocks with ongoing projects like email migrations, server upgrades, all the things that IT is doing we might need to weigh in on as the security overlords. And we finish up with action items like upgrade your shit, patch your shit, install this shit, oh shit. Now, in order for me to fully explain what I do, I have to explain what a cloud security stack is and how a cloud security engineer builds and maintains it. We've reached a point in cybersecurity, defense in depth, layers, where the amount of security controls is getting out of control. AI needs to save us from ourselves. Security controls needed to get to a secure enough position to not only qualify for cybersecurity insurance in the event that you get breached, not if, when you do, but also prevent the majority of the lazy breach attempts in the first place. So cybersecurity insurance doesn't have to get involved and pay out and your premiums go up and people get fired because someone's getting scapegoated. In organizations, we need defense in depth through what eventually becomes a massive tech stack. Now, this is a old diagram, but perfectly encompasses what type of controls are needed to protect a company's mission critical assets. What tools you have to enforce those controls can be seen in this chart. Now, the only difference between a cloud security engineer and a security engineer is what they're protecting. Cloud security engineers are a type of security engineer who specializes in developing, deploying, and maintaining secure cloud infrastructures, protecting organizations that are fully integrated in the cloud. Whereas a security engineer may need to support on-premise infrastructure or anything not hosted in the cloud. Spoiler alert, I also have to deal with on-premise shit. So I'm actually kind of the best of both worlds. A security unicorn? Nah, security goblin. We have a massive playbook with controls. We've set up for all of our clients and within that playbook are very granular controls in any of these security tools. Will we get all of our clients to accept every single control? Nah, probably not. Because some controls just fuck everything up for certain clients' business workflow. My primary focus is endpoint security. So any tools within this section here, but I'm constantly helping where I can in other tools to get every one of our clients into the safest state possible. Obviously, I can't be proficient in all of this, nor should a person be expected to. As I've said before, cybersecurity has become so massive that you need to specialize. So I kind of am. Reducing as much risk as possible without impacting the business is our ultimate goal. People. Are dead. Oh my God. Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. Let's stay calm. As a cloud security engineer, it is my job to implement any control that should be in place and isn't yet and maintain them as in putting in exclusions, exceptions, etc. That's pretty much it. If I could give you a breakdown of any random workday, first 15 minutes, I'm reading through our communication app where all of our clients can post questions, comments, concerns, shits on fire. Also, I review any new alerts because part of my job is being the security analyst escalation point. Since I was the senior security analyst before my promotion, if security analysts have any questions or need a second set of eyes on any alert to confirm their findings or if they can't access something, I'm usually the go-to person for questions there. First 15 minutes, I'm reading through every new comment, email, alert, and if something comes up that needs immediate attention, I'll obviously jump to that first. Otherwise, I'll mentally plan out what I'm going to focus on for the day. Meetings will eat up roughly four hours of my workday. Crazy. 
I know, I hate it too. Up to an hour each day is updating documentation and meeting notes. Because if you don't document something, how do you prove you're doing your job? Flexing with juicy documentation can get you promoted. Eh? Also, part of that hour is sending out communication to any follow-up items. The follow-up items for IT teams, for the clients, depending on the client, can either remain untouched for months or get done the same day. I know which clients are which. Any remaining time I have is dedicated to projects. There's constantly projects being worked on by everyone on the team. Security engineer projects can vary in scale. Some security controls, like disabling local admin accounts on all devices, disabling insecure encryption protocols, or more complicated and impactful ones like implementing phishing resistant MFA, that's a hot new topic with phishing and business email compromise continuing to be the number one source of breaches in organizations. It's not surprising it's such a hot topic because we need it. So for any one of these projects, we have to test the control or deployment, document it, and sometimes provide a write-up for IT teams to understand the ask. What needs to be done? How to ensure a control is implemented or a tool is deployed as seamlessly as possible and also providing clear instructions for reverting any changes made when deploying whatever it is we're recommending. And we recently started a push to deploy zero trust using a tool called ThreatLocker because AppLocker is a pain in the ass. Shout out to ThreatLocker, the sponsor of this video. Thank you for your longtime support and allowing me to showcase a security tool we use at work and one that honestly everyone should have if they're serious about stopping security breaches. ThreatLocker is first and foremost a robust application control tool. It acts as a whitelist of every approved application with a default deny slapped on top following a learning phase where it learns the baseline of what's expected. You shall not pass. Don't believe me? I downloaded a bunch of viruses on my pooter and we're going to execute them as admin. And to make it extra fun, we'll disable Defender because we don't want anything getting in the way of us executing these viruses, except for ThreatLock. Here we go. Let's head on down to the malware bazaar and snatch us up some viruses. The rat going, valley rat, keylogger, everybody needs one of them. Swarm, do they have ransomware? Where's their ransomware? Haha, <laughs> there we go. Some ransomware, rusty stealer. All right, let's try all these ransomwares. I think that's a good variety of viruses and such. I can't even download 7-zip to open up the malware. We got our ransomware, our rats, all of our fun stuff here. Let's just right click, run as admin, hit yes nope got blocked run as admin that's a hard no run as admin yes that's a hard no can't load the script run as admin that's a no yes script file yeah loading script that's not gonna work I'm trying to open that at all it just immediately gets denied nope blocked no that's a hard no it's a no it's denied blocked nothing runs it's instantaneously blocked well there you go folks what more do i need to show you clean as a whistle everything blocked because threat locker said not today so if you're interested check out threat locker in the link down below and schedule a free demo to give you more examples of what tools i work with multiple types of edr and policies within them, building custom detection rules in both our SIM and EDR, integrating more logs into our SIM for better visibility and log retention. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. Firewall policies, email filtering rules, access management policies to restrict what company resources users can access, where they can access it, what devices they can access it from. Think company device versus personal device. Now, that is a average workday. Sounds like a lot, cause it is. I'm overwhelmed, sort of. Never a dull day. A lot of Googling configurations and a lot of AI prompts to help my Googling. There are some days where an incident occurs and so we'll jump on an incident bridge and it's all hands on deck to put out the fire, all whilst documenting it in a incident response report. These incidents can sometimes eat up an entire day, depending on how bad it is. Sometimes it runs into the night outside of work hours. Lately, there's been a rise in incidents because people are stupid, so. Fuck me, I guess. More meetings. Luckily, we're not expected to be on call. Now, if all of this sounds like fun to you, let me describe what you should do if you want to pursue a job in the cloud. Whether that's security or not, there's a lot of roles in the cloud. Let me preface this by saying cloud security is not an entry level job. Now I know you will hear cybersecurity is not an entry level role. It's even harder to get into than a SOC analyst or security analyst role. So let's just say security engineer or cloud security engineer is the mid tier of cybersecurity jobs because it requires a very good understanding of the basics of IT, understanding what applications a typical business relies on and how they work, the basics of networking, protocols, 
protocols, how things break, how things communicate, the basics of cybersecurity, understanding what needs to be protected, why it needs protecting, and how to protect it. All those three can land you a job as a security or SOC analyst. For cloud security, on top of all that, you need to know cloud computing, what you can host in the cloud and how to build it. Now, the three big cloud giants offer a ridiculous amount of services, features, functionality that you would need to become familiar with. In my mind, there are two reasonable paths to landing a job as a cloud security engineer, finding a company that uses the cloud for its infrastructure and landing any possible job in their IT department and hope there's room to pivot internally into a cloud security role. This is more or less what I did. I started in the company as a senior security analyst, started to poke around in the engineering side of things, got more involved and was promoted. Option two is stacking cloud certifications. There's a shit ton. Build cloud security projects and try to find a job as an associate cloud engineer. Then pivot into cloud security engineering. My old coworker at the MSP I worked for previously did this exactly. Got some Azure certifications and landed a sweet gig as an associate Azure engineer. Now, he was wicked smart, but still, a viable option. These associate roles in cloud engineering are where you would be expected to know how to build things. A step beyond that is knowing how to secure those things, therefore requiring even more knowledge. Meaning cloud security engineering would be a harder job to land by cold applying to jobs. And even if you go network yourself and go to some infosec conventions, it's a tough sell if you're not stacked with cloud knowledge. For cloud security projects, you'll want to be familiar with most of these features, functionality, whatever you want to call it, available in one of the cloud giants. Pick one, and learn it. A lot of companies use multiple cloud providers, but they're effectively doing the same shit with different buzzword names slapped onto the service. I've got a couple of videos about deploying Microsoft's Sentinel, which is a cloud-based SIM that you can pair with Microsoft's EDR, Defender for Endpoint. If you wanna check that out, that's a great start for someone who's itching to learn about cloud. What you need to learn through either an associate cloud engineer role or copious amounts of projects is how to build a cloud infrastructure that fits very specific business needs. Money, 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 money. Mindlessly building things without the intention of it being used for some business purpose is basically pointless. Imagine. You're in an interview and you're asked, we need to deploy a security control that only allows access to specific company resources to a subset of users, say the software engineering team, and on a restricted network. That is a business need that needs to be paired with multiple security controls. So be intentional about what you're building and what it's for. To summarize, start with the basics, pick one of the cloud giants, get a series of certifications from them, and apply to jobs that mention AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. Oh.